So what does the return of the Taliban mean for the people of Afghanistan? The last time they were in power, the Taliban not only suspended active politics, but they also put an end to all civil rights. Women were the biggest victims under the rule. They were banned from working, forbidden from attending schools, forced to observe parada at all times and barred from stepping out alone. Is it going to be the same this time as well? The Taliban says it has changed its approach, but some recent developments tell a different story. Here's a report with more. Twenty years after being ousted by the U.S. military, the Taliban has returned to power in Afghanistan. Two decades of gains made by Afghans are being rolled back. The dream of a modern democratic state is fading away. What lies ahead for the people of Afghanistan if history is anything to go by? To start with, this return spells the end of democracy. The Taliban are rolling up their sleeves to establish what they call the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. This essentially means a rerun of the 1990s, when the Taliban suspended active politics and ruled the country through swords and guns. They jailed and executed those who sided with the government. Civil rights were suspended. Women were banned from working. Young girls were forbidden from attending schools or universities. They were all forced to observe Purda in equal measure and barred from stepping out without being accompanied by a male relative. Men were forbidden from shaving their beards and forced to wear turbans. Prayer was made compulsory. Those who did not comply were arrested. Movie theaters were closed and repurposed as mosques. This time, the Taliban say their approach will be different, that they will create a society different from their previous rule. But there are reports of a woman already getting killed for wearing tight clothes. And lists of girls above 15 and widows under 45 being sought for being married off to the Taliban. These go to show how the Taliban have hardly mended their ways. A victorious Taliban will also seek international legitimacy. It will deal with international stakeholders on its own terms. The peace talks in Doha had already granted them some sort of validity. Western powers dealt with the Taliban as genuine stakeholders in Afghanistan. China has already been engaging with the Taliban leadership. Last month it rolled out the red carpet for high-ranking Taliban delegates. Now China says it is willing to continue to have friendly ties with the Taliban in Afghanistan. The return of the Taliban also means the resurgence of terror outfits like the lashkar e taiba jaish e mohammed and the Al-Qaeda. As decades have passed, familial links have been forged between these outfits. Reports as recent as last month reveal how many terrorists from Pakistani outfits have joined the Taliban as commanders and advisors. For the Al-Qaeda, which carried out the 9-11 attacks on New York, there will be ample opportunity to rebuild and consolidate under a Taliban-run Afghanistan. This is not conjecture. America's Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley has already told American senators that the Al-Qaeda could re-emerge sooner than expected. In a nutshell, the return of the Taliban spells doom, both for the people of Afghanistan and for the existing geopolitical dynamics in the region and beyond. Bureau Report, we on. World is one. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.